Okay, today we're going to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines and their relationships and some of the definitions that we use in algebra. So first let's start with uh, some of the basics that I think most people uh, do know. Uh, and, and that's uh, what a parallel line is and what a perpendicular line is. A parallel line or parallel lines are two lines that in a two-dimensional plane, two-dimensional, and two-dimensional uh, plane never intersect. So we presume they go on on into infinity and never ever cross. Now that's a special pair of lines that would never cross. Um, most lines will cross. They will cross someplace in two-dimensional space. No matter how parallel they may look, at some point, if, they're, if they are not uh, by definition parallel, they will cross somewhere. Now, um, perpendicular lines aren't lines that just cross. Or they have a very special crossing. That special crossing is they cross at an angle of 90 degrees. So these cross at 90 degrees. It makes a nice right angle. And so, uh, again, um, uh, there's three different types of lines. Lines that never cross, lines that cross at a perfect 90 degree angle, and then all the others, which is the vast majority of lines that do intersect at some point in two-dimensional space. Okay, so like I said, in parallel lines that never intersect, well, when we talk about uh, in, in algebra, um, we have a more formal definition. We don't talk about never intersecting. We talk about uh, that they have to have the same slope. In other words, if I have two lines, line A and line B, that the slopes of the lines must be the same. And that really means two different things. That if I see two equations that have the exact same slope, that means by definition they are parallel. If I tell you some two lines are parallel, that that means by definition they must have the same slope. So for example, if I say the slope of line A is 2 over 3, then that by definition I say that these are parallel, the slope of line B must also be 2 over 3. Okay, let's consider a line that has the equation y equals 2 over 3x plus 9. So it says our slope is 2 over 3, it's all the, always the co coefficient for x, and this is telling us the y-intercept. Now notice on my graph I don't have a y-intercept, I mean it could be way over here to the right, it could be way over here to the left. We don't really know. But what I like to think about is this tells us what the line looks like. I could tell that without any sort of um, axes just because of the way it uh, rises over runs. It rises to and runs three. So that's independent of its uh, coordinates. Um, what isn't independent is this. This is telling us where it is. This is saying that wherever the y-axis is, it crosses it at nine, or it crosses it at the point zero nine. So remember that um, any line that we draw here um, represents an infinite amount of points that are so close together that it makes a line. And I'm just picking one point on the line, this point right here. And why I'm picking this point is I want to show you that um, the relationship between another line that is also uh, has a slope of 2 over 3. Obviously, they are parallel. But now what's different is my y-intercept. Notice the y-intercept here is 12, and the y-intercept is uh, on this one is 9. Notice that this one is 3 larger on the y-axis. Well. Again, we don't know where the y-axis is, but what that does mean is this line sits above this line by 3. In other words, I take any point on this line and count 3 up, and I'll have another point. Well, I'll have a point on this line. Geometrically sp speaking, uh, this, is, this is called a translation. The, the, uh, the line is being translated up when we go from here to here. But what it uh, means for you guys is that it's exactly three units in the y direction above it. Similarly, if I had this equation here, again, has the exact same slope, I can tell that this slope is exactly five units below this line. And it's eight units below this line. So I could take any point on this red line here and count down five places, like if I took this point and went one, two, three, four, five, I would know that that would be a point on this line. I'll use this one right here, one, two, three, four, five, and I have another point here. This represents uh, this line. Again, there are an infinite amount of 
uh, lines that have the same slope and this just shows our relationship between parallel lines. Okay, perpendicular lines. Again, we talk about perpendicular lines as they intersect at a right angle at 90 degrees, but in algebraically speaking, we define it differently. We say that two lines are perpendicular if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals. Again, they are only perpendicular if you can show that the slopes of the two lines are negative reciprocals. Negative reciprocals, well, I think most of you guys know what a reciprocal is. Like if I gave the, uh, uh, the fraction 4 over 3 and asked what the reciprocal is, most of you guys would go 3 over 4. And the reason they're reciprocals is that if I multiply two reciprocals together, I will always get a 1. That's the definition. But I'm looking for a negative reciprocal. So two things that multiply together to get negative one. For me to get a negative one here, one of those two have to be negative. Like for example, this one could be negative. These two numbers represent negative reciprocals, or some, sometimes they're called opposite reciprocals. So by definition, in algebra, we say that two lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. The product of their slopes is negative 1. So for example, if line A has a slope of 2 over 3, the slope of line B, if I tell you that they are perpendicular, must be negative 3 over 2. Okay, so let's do a couple problems here. And our first problem is, um, if I give you this line, y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 4, what I'm asking you is, is this line, y equals 2x minus 6, is it parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Uh, please take a moment and give it a shot. Okay, um, so the way that we would tell, of course, we're looking at the slope of this line. So um, for the line to be parallel, it would have to have a slope of negative 1 over 2. If it was perpendicular, a perpendicular slope to this would have to be 2 or 2 over 1. So we look down at this line and we realize the slope of this line, because it is in slope intercept form, is simple to find out. It's 2 and we see that this, these two lines are perpendicular lines. Okay, um, you guys try this one. Okay, again we're looking at the slope of this line. And I notice a parallel line would be 4 over 3, and a perpendicular line would be negative 3 over 4, the opposite reciprocal. Because this slope is 3 over 4, it is neither parallel nor perpendicular, meaning it has to be neither. So it does, it, these two lines do intersect, okay, but they just don't intersect at a right angle. Okay, um, give this one a shot. Okay. Well, again, we look at our line here, and we know that it, if the slope is negative 1 over 3, it's parallel. If it's a positive 3 or a positive 3 over 1, it's perpendicular. We just have to figure out the slope of this line, which we would go ahead and calculate. Well, we could go ahead and convert this into slope intercept form, and we would find that the slope of this line is negative 1 over 3, which shows us that the line is parallel. Okay, uh, try these four problems, or these four in problem four. If I give you the line y equals 2 over 5x minus 1, can you find the slopes of each one of these? Or can you find the relationship between these four lines? Okay. <coughs> uh, line A is neither. Line B is perpendicular. Line C is parallel and line D is neither. And the way that we figure these out is simply by finding the slope of each of these lines. And this one is simple, negative 2, two over 5. This one is negative 5 over 2. This one is negative 2 over negative 5, which simplifies to 2 over 5. And finally, this one, negative 5 over a negative 2, which simplifies, of course, to 5 over 2. Okay? 
Okay, now this is a, a more challenging problem, and this is one that we really have to understand to be able to uh, go further on um, in this chapter. We want to write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line that passes through this particular point and is perpendicular to this particular line. So what we're saying is we have this line here, and it's just um, we use this as it gives us a relationship to the line that we want. We want to write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form for a line that goes through this point. Now, there's an infinite amount of lines that do go through that point, an infinite amount. But we want very specifically uh, the one that goes through this point and is perpendicular to this line. So we want something that looks like that. What is our equation for that line? Well, to write an equation for a line, we need to have a slope and a point on the line. And we do have that because we have the relationship that is perpendicular to this line. So we find the slope of the line, use the point-slope formula, and then convert it to slope-intercept form. So the slope of the line that I have is negative 1 over 2. The slope of the line I want, the one that's perpendicular to this, is the opposite reciprocal or a positive 2. So once I have that, I know this part of it, I just need a, the next step to get the y-intercept. Again, I have the slope. I have a point. I use the point slope. I mean, not rocket science, right? Point. Or here's our point, and here's our slope. And then we convert that into slope-intercept form. Okay, you guys try one. All right. Um, again, we want to. Uh, we have a slope of three. So what's the slope that we want for the line that we want? It has to be perpendicular, so it's negative 1 over 3. So now I have a slope, and I have a point. Simply, we plug it in and do the algebra, converting into slope-intercept form. We have a line that has a slope of negative 1 over 3x and crosses the y-axis at 3. Let's try one last one. Here, same thing, we're looking for something that's perpendicular. And now we have this in standard form. So um, we have to convert this to find our slope of this line, which we find is negative 2 over 3. Slope of a line that's perpendicular is a positive 3 over 2. We plug it in to our point-slope formula, given that we have a point and a slope. And then we just convert this into slope-intercept form. So our homework tonight is this out of uh, out of the textbook, and I will see you tomorrow.